So I have made a YouTube video for 52 weeks in a row, specifically every single Sunday for 52 Sundays in a row. Um, and I thought it'd be fun, mostly for me, to talk about uh, hitting that milestone and uh, a few different things. So I'm gonna split this video up into some different sections. The first is gonna be, why have I done that? Why have I made a video for 52 weeks in a row in particular? What I've learned from doing it and like a year on YouTube or whatever. And then uh, the cost, which I actually think will be quite interesting. Not just the financial cost, which I won't really talk about because it's like, I don't know, I bought a camera and some equipment and it's like maybe a thousand pounds, but the actual cost to my life, the cost, like the time cost, the sort of mental cost and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the final section would just be like, what next? What am I gonna do with the next year potentially of my life or on YouTube in particular? So yeah, uh, if you wanna watch something more useful, then go somewhere else and watch someone else's like more directly educational video. But uh, this might be interesting to see or for, for you to hear about like what exactly I'm thinking, what it's actually been like to do this every single week for a year. And by the end of the video, hopefully you'll know kind of everything that I'm thinking about YouTube and everything I'm thinking about like my life and whatever. And that might, you know, there might be something useful for you there. Um, and feel free to watch it at two times speed. That's what I do quite often on YouTube, especially if the video is a little rambly. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. So why have I posted a video every single week? Why have I taken that so seriously um, and actually done it? And when, when like it's, necess it's not necessarily the best way to grow on YouTube at all by any means. Um, like consistency is important, but you know, if they're better videos, then you could make one and get way more views. So why have I done it like that? Well, I've actually got some notes just here, but as I was saying it, I just realized the, re the reason I actually first started making a video every single week was because someone who inspired me to start making YouTube videos, who I now work for, is this YouTuber called Ali Abdal. And he actually, one of his like things that he says is like, if you make a YouTube video for every, every single week for two, uh, two years in a row, uh, every single week for two years, then you, will change your life, your life will change. And I was like, fuck it, yeah, that sounds like a great kind of like uh, schedule to stick to, let's do that. And now it has been a year and I've just taken it really seriously, I guess, about like sticking to that upload schedule. And actually Ali wasn't wrong. My life has totally changed because I started doing this a year ago when I was still working as a management consultant and then I like made a few of these videos, then I quit my job and then I was self-employed for a bit and now I'm actually working for Ali. So kind of some weird full circle there. Um, and he's obviously kind of like getting employees into his team by telling people to start YouTube channels. But that was the actual initial reason why I was like, the one a week thing came to mind. But then why did I take it actually so seriously? Well, there are a couple reasons. The first is that I actually just didn't want to break the streak. And like that happened quite early on, after like three or four Sundays in a row, I was like, shit, I've got this thing going, I now need to stick to it. And I wanted to stick to it because I wanted to become a doer. Not someone who just thought about stuff and who'd, had ideas and dreams about things they wanted to do in the future, I wanted to actually do it and actually act on the things that I thought about. And I thought sticking to this weekly schedule was like a real uh, indicator of how seriously I was taking stuff. And so doing it every single week was like, no, I am a doer, I am someone who does stuff. So a lot of it has been an identity thing. So actually posting a video because it is like every video that I post, everything that I do kind of online that turns me into someone who does stuff and who is like someone who takes action and pursues the thing that the things that I want to pursue. And not posting a video kind of just like slightly dents that uh, identity. So that's part of the reason, that's quite a big reason why I took it so seriously. I used to be such a dreamer. I used to just think about all of these things I wanted to do. And there came a point when I realized that I was never going to get to where I wanted to get to without putting in the work. And so I was just like, I need to do this. I have to take this seriously. And if I'm not posting every week, then I'm not really taking it seriously and I can't expect anything from it. Another reason why is you simply cannot get views if you don't post anything. So I thought I kind of want to take as many shots as possible on YouTube. And one a week was like, it seemed like a good metric, uh, a good like number to aim for. And uh, I have taken maybe 68 or 69 shots, as it were, on YouTube, um, 69 videos. And so, you know, that's quite a few times to have a go at the YouTube algorithm, or whatever. And it's kind of worked a little bit. Um, probably not as much as I would have hoped. You know, if I said to myself a year ago that I'd have like roughly 4,000 subscribers, then 
I'm not quite sure if I would have been that happy, but equally, I feel good about it now. I'm still kind of like buzzing about, you know, trying to make really good videos. And there are lots of videos that I want to make that I think would be really fun to make. So yeah, not necessarily the fastest way to grow posting every week, but uh, definitely you cannot get views if you don't upload. So that was something that I thought about. It's like that thing, if you don't shoot, you can't score. So I just was like, I need to post a video because then maybe it'll take off. Another reason why I posted every single week is just curiosity. I was really curious. I still am really, really curious, like what I can do if I force myself to post every week, like how good can I get at kind of like making that system work for me around my life, like the whole kind of like video production system. And then also how good can I get like make, uh, making the videos and can I just like, you know, uh, kind of break the YouTube algorithm or whatever and make it work for me. I was just, I'm just still really curious if I can do that. And I've learned so much and I feel more confident that I can, that I can do that and kind of like can, get more views and kind of make it work for me. And that's not the only thing I'm chasing, for sure. The only thing, not the only thing I'm chasing is views, but um, it does, it is some kind of indicator of success. And obviously I kind of want the videos to reach more and more people, I guess, like that's, you know, I'm not doing this just for, uh, to get them watched by like one person, even though that is a really good way of motivating yourself to do it and being okay with the video quality is being like, is this video gonna help one person? which I do think about a lot and I'm like, I don't want to get too attached to the numbers. But equally, uh, I like the idea of like trying to be successful on YouTube and I find that a bit of a challenge. So I quite like that side of things. And then the final reason why I've been posting every week is, uh, which I kind of referenced a few times, is related to this idea of if you want the rewards, you have to put in the work. And that was something I thought about quite a lot anyway. But then I watched this video from Casey Neistat, famous YouTuber, who did uh, like, two years of daily vlogs. So he uploaded a video every single day and they're like these kind of short little movies that he makes like out of his life. And they're just vlogs, but he always uh, turns it into a little bit of a short film in like a really impressive way. Super, super cool. And on a year of doing, his year anniversary of uploading daily vlogs, he said this and it uh, kind of summarized a lot of how I felt about, or how I feel about the past year. Um, so he said, I didn't start daily vlogging to grow my YouTube channel. I did it as a way to kill all those excuses I used that kept me from making more movies because at every single inflection point in my life, doing the work has always been the thing, has always been the catalyst that took me from where I am to where I wanted to be. And that is just exactly how I feel about the past year. Uploading like every single week has just been that thing for me that I'm like, okay, I'm doing the work, I'm putting in the work. And even though the videos haven't always been as good as they could have been, or if I'd taken like two weeks or three weeks over a video, it could have been a lot better. And I've definitely sacrificed a lot of quality in some areas. Just uploading every week has just been like a catalyst for me to kind of push me forwards, to move me forwards, to like generate this uh, identity as someone who takes action, who someone who takes responsibility for my progress. And it has like helped me in so many other areas because I've become someone who will like, you know, uh, just take way more control over my future than I used to be, than I used to do. And uh, it kind of, yeah, it goes into other areas of my life. Like I will take action in other areas. Like if I, I feel more confident in kind of like, you know, creating career opportunities for myself, for example, like if I was like, okay, I want to go into this industry, I just feel way more confident that I could do that. And that I could like, that I could just put in the work and achieve what I wanted to achieve. And even though it's like the outcomes of what I have done have not maybe matched the uh, expectations that I had at the start, the like actual process of doing the work has really kind of made me a lot uh, more satisfied and very, more like just very satisfied in general because I've been able to carry through on the things that I wanted to do. You cannot control the outcomes of what you do, but you can control the inputs. And the input for me was just a video a week. So that's kind of why I have like taken it so seriously and uploaded a video every single week. I just wanted to like really, you know, put in the work and if I, uh, was like gonna take this whole thing seriously, I better just like do what I set out to do and make a video every week. And it's cool to have done that. And it's cool to have like, um, know that I can do that. I'm like, whatever goal I set myself in the future. Like if I, if I kind of stopped YouTube and had the time to like go to the gym con really consistently, um, then I just sort of feel really confident that I actually could just like set that habit and be really disciplined about it and actually go if I sort of knew that I wanted the rewards and uh, so whatever goal it is I have in the future, I sort of feel confident that I can now discipline myself into doing the thing. And that has been like a really valuable lesson 
in probably a more valuable lesson than actually getting like you know blowing up on youtube or whatever so um yeah that's why i've taken it i've done the 52 weeks in a row so the next thing we talk about is just what i have learned other than the whole putting in the work thing and uh you know the consistency the consistency thing i just thought i would talk about the things that i have learned about like making stuff online and uh kind of how that has like affected me and basically making stuff online is really really sensible and really really uh, advantageous and if you're not doing it you are missing out and yeah basically that is genuinely how I feel um I was like stuff just was slower in my life before I started building like this online presence and it doesn't have to be YouTube videos it really doesn't it could be posting once a week or once every two weeks on LinkedIn it could be talking about something on Instagram talking about something on like a podcast just having a place on the internet where you are doing something and talking about something and sharing stuff is it just will help it just is like beneficial stuff will just kind of happen um that you didn't expect like people might message you whatever random connections or uh, at the very least you can show that you have done something in a scenario where you need to kind of like talk about your experiences job applicate like like a job application or something like that you can say oh i've been running this instagram account for a year and yeah i don't have many followers but i've been like really really consistent with all of these like um you know posting pictures of food that i have eaten or whatever i just think that it's such a sensible thing to be doing and i didn't really have anything online before um but now i have this like pretty big portfolio of stuff that i have created and i think it is uh, a good thing. I think it is something that like most employers would respect and appreciate. I'm sure there are some companies that wouldn't want someone who makes YouTube videos, whatever. Uh, the companies that I want to work for probably would appreciate that or at least just appreciate the mindset, the like discipline and the growth mindset and all of those kind of things. And uh, yeah, they could also watch the videos, I guess, and like see a little bit about who I am. And hopefully that would be a good thing rather than a bad thing. And I, yeah, I just think that it has furthered my work and career so much having stuff online just like i can you know send a link to my youtube channel to like random people and they generally just appreciate it and that's the other thing that i have learned is that 99 percent of putting stuff online 99.9 percent .9 is totally fine no one uh like all the things that you're worried about like people saying weird things, uh, people saying mean things to you or about you, people thinking like uh, bad things about you, being worried about kind of coming, how you come across on camera, being worried about, uh, yeah, how you come across online, being worried about giving away too much information about your life, like online security, all of that stuff. Obviously those things like can go wrong, but I haven't had any really negative experiences so far in kind of any part of posting stuff online. Yes. Uh, I'll talk about this more in the cost section of this video, like the actual mental cost of doing this. But there is like a little bit of a, uh, you know, I think about, I'm like, oh, I do worry about what people might think. But generally that's just all in your head. Nothing actually materializes in reality uh, from anyone else. Like you never actually hear people say mean things. I've heard so few negative comments um, uh, that I basically, don't really worry about anything anymore. Quite a useful mindset shift that I had at the very start of making videos to help me kind of get going and feel comfortable about talking about the things that I wanted to talk about online was, would I talk about this to a friend? Like, would I say these things to a friend and would I feel embarrassed about it? And basically everything, the, the answer to that question with all of the different topics that I wanted to talk about was no. And uh, I would say these things to a friend. I would say them to anyone who wanted to, to listen, um, assuming they were interested. I would happily talk about like careers and my journey and like the quarter life crisis stuff and like, or any books that I'd read or whatever. And I was just like, why is it different to talk about it online? Yeah, everyone can see that I'm doing it, but it's, and like they could, because, because everyone can see it, they can all have a conversation about it. Otherwise it's no different. That's the scary bit is like people kind of like, you know, talking behind your back or whatever. And that's like, or just people thinking things about you, but it's just like, you know, even if it happens, it, ugh, you don't know, you can't experience, you cannot like be part of uh, other people's thoughts and other people's conversations. So uh, I generally am at peace with all of that side of things. And I just talk about stuff on here that I would talk to anyone about. And so it's just an extension of myself online. And that is a really important thing. I'm just 
try to be myself as much as possible and therefore it's no different to how I would be in person or how or any conversations that I would have in person. Another mindset shift that's really powerful that I have thought about a lot over the past year is asking what if it works out. So I used to be someone who was very negative about uh, like taking risks and uh, thinking just what if it works out. I would always be someone like what if it goes wrong? What if the bad thing happens? What if the worst case scenario happens? What if I fail? What if I look stupid? Always negative, always straight to the worst case scenario. And so never acting because in my head is the image of everything going wrong. When you switch your mindset to, well, yeah, okay, that could happen. But what if the best thing happens? What if it goes really well? What if it works out? That is so, so different. Because now you're thinking about the good things. You're like, okay, maybe I'll just try this because yeah, that actually, it might work out, what if it does? It's very hard to tell like the probabilities of the, you know, the actual like whatever random scenario we're talking about, like whether the good thing will happen or whether the bad thing will happen. But generally we catastrophize in our heads. We always think about uh, things going wrong rather than things going well. And people who think about things going well and take uh, like opportunities and take chances because they think, what if it works out? Those people get ahead. Those people go further in life because they take more chances, they take more shots, they take more risks. The people who think, mm, no, it's not gonna work, ah, and I'm scared, like I don't wanna do it because like it might go wrong. You don't get anywhere. You don't move forwards when you don't take more chances. That is a really powerful mindset shift that I have thought about a lot. And I'm like, and it has worked, it's paid off. Like the last year, I was like, what if I start a YouTube channel and it works and it goes well? What if I quit my job and actually it's the right decision? What if I, just keep going and yeah, it works out. It's so, so different living your life like that. And there are people in my life, like my friends, who have this mindset and I see how well it works out for them. So my housemate is someone who just like absolutely has this mindset. He always thinks, what if it works? What if I just do the thing and it works out? He always takes shots. And I see it so like firsthand that I'm, it, it genuinely inspires me quite a lot. And I um, learn from that mindset and I see it work out for him. And so for example, one thing, that he does do quite well is when uh, we like want to go out for dinner or something and the restaurant is like always fully booked on the day or something, he will just call the restaurant just in case they have a spare seat and they have a spare table like or someone's cancelled or whatever. My mindset would be, oh no, they're always like booked up. I'm I'm not gonna call, there's no there's no point. But he's like, oh, what if, yeah, what if they're, what if they've like had a cancellation? Calls up and they're like, oh yeah, we've got a free table. And he's like, great, now we're going to that restaurant. It's a uh, you know, niche example, but the point about just taking the chance, taking the risk, at basically no cost to him except a few minutes and making the phone call, um, it just means that things just work out better. People who have this mindset, they get further, they apply to more jobs, they like take more risks, they um, just have a go. And it, uh, I think, is just a really hidden um, secret to for success for a lot of people, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a quality that some people have that really helps them go through life. And I am not someone who's naturally like that. So I am trying to internalize it and just be kind of like, what if it works? I'm gonna take the chance, I'm gonna take the risk. And generally the downside is nowhere near as bad as you think it is. At least I can say that for myself. The downsides for me are like running out of money, having no job and being able to live with some member of my family at least. Um, and yeah, that's probably the worst case scenario for me. So um, it might be different for you. It's all really contextual, this stuff, but recognizing that the human condition is to think uh, more negatively, to catastrophize, to think about the worst case scenario is uh, super useful. And being like that self-aware to understand that we think negatively instead of positively uh, a lot of the time. So the cost, what has been the cost to my life? Um, the financial cost, I don't like total, I don't know. I'd probably say like 2000 pounds <laughs> in the past year I've spent on YouTube, probably something like that. Most of that is the fact that I actually had to buy a new laptop, which I would have had to buy anyway. Um, but then like subscriptions, I bought a new camera and a new lens, which probably came to like 700 quid. 
And then, uh, yeah, I bought like a little few pieces of equipment. This microphone here, which you can't see, uh, I got from a friend, so that was useful. Um, but yeah, that's like the money side of things. Not really the biggest thing on my mind. Um, quite a lot of money, like in uh, as a proportion of how much money I have. But uh, I saw it as an investment for the long term, and I still think that's going to pay off. So um, that side of things is broadly fine. The other cost, the much bigger cost to my life has been the time investment, has been the time spent both doing and thinking about YouTube and online stuff and content and whatever. And I have like, you might, I don't know, you, you might be watching this if you've been following, you know, my videos and my journey online, you might be thinking uh, either like Tintin looks like he's pretty sorted or pretty and pretty organized and like does, you know, seems to make videos every week. Or you might be thinking, Christ, Tintin, like he, he's, you know, he's barely making better videos than he did at the start. He's quite often uploading without editing. He, uh, yeah, is a bit, has a bit of a messy channel and made loads of video, boring videos over the summer about this book, Design Your Life, like he's got no strategy, whatever. Yeah, I relate to both of those things. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing YouTube really badly. In some ways I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm doing it super well. Or like just the consistency thing well. Um, I don't know. The point is, uh, I, I can't remember where I was going. Oh yeah, the, regardless of what you think, like YouTube has taken up a lot of my time and uh, thinking about stuff, like I have tried to do my best, like this is probably my best, uh, all of this stuff that I'm doing, like this is what I have got to offer and um, it takes up a lot of time thinking about it and doing it and the cost to that is me not doing other things. If I had like an extra day or two a week and I could squeeze all of this into it, there'd be no cost to the rest of my life probably, except for just like thinking about it a lot of the time. But it has had to replace other things in my life um, because I've had to squeeze it in somehow. And so that generally is time with friends or family, I would say. Um, a little bit of it is maybe like doing slightly less exercise or whatever, but uh, mostly it's relationships. And that is a big cost to me. And it's something I'm very conscious of is seeing people slightly less because I am like, okay, I know I need to use this Sunday to work. I need to use this Sunday to like film a video and edit it and whatever. And I, yeah, don't like that cost. But as I said earlier, if you want the rewards, you have to put in the work. And so I've been thinking a lot, like what is more important to me? You know, like having success on online and making money online and like trying to inspire other people. Um, and when I say making money, the money thing I like want to, I want to make money online as a way to like rely less on a job. I'm not trying to uh, make billions, you know, um, but like I do want to make money out of this stuff because uh, that's like um, satisfying. Yeah. But yeah, so that's why, that's one of the reasons why I want it. But the, the downside is that it takes like a me away from other parts of my life and I don't enjoy that a lot of the time and um yeah having to like schedule time to make videos when I'm like oh I'd much rather do this thing it's difficult and the way I think about it is over the past year having made all these videos I now get to live the benefits like my life has totally changed and I'm working in a job that I really love which I think is going to be really interesting um uh over the next couple months and years hopefully if I you know um stick around there which I would really like to, um, I now get to live the benefits of putting in this hard work for a year. And that is like, when people go to an investment bank or a law firm or a really like a uh, competitive job where they demand a lot of you, if you do it for like two years after university, you get to live the benefits of that for the rest of your life because it's always on your CV. Like people will just give you more stuff and give you more opportunities because they know you have like had a really difficult job at like maybe a well-known firm and people respect that and you get to live the benefits. In the same way, doing this work over the past year, like putting in this uh, extra effort, which hasn't been like a, an insane cost to my life, it's just meant that I've had less free time. I get to experience the benefit, benefits of it now. I get to upload a video and make some money. I get to, um, you know, I get like sponsorships for these videos now, which is quite fun. And I have this job, which I love. And I get all the benefits of putting in the work. And so I am like, how long do I do that for? How long do I, uh, you know, keep putting in the work before I kind of maybe cash in on it in some way and like stop doing it? Um, 
because I do really enjoy doing this. So like maybe I'll just do it for a long, long time. But there's, there is the cost of not seeing people who I want to see and things like that. I uh, like weigh up directly alongside the benefits of doing this online stuff. So um, yeah, that is a big cost. That is a big cost is like seeing people less basically. The other cost is the mental cost. Um, so yeah, as I said, there was like the doing and the thinking. The cost of doing is having less time. And then the cost of thinking about it is that I'm like less present in the rest of my life. I'm like, you know, I'll be either spending time with people or I'll be working and I'll be thinking about things. I'll be like, oh, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I could try this. Maybe I should make TikToks. Maybe I should make YouTube shorts. Maybe I should, um, you know, make longer videos. Maybe I should make this type of video. Oh, I need to write down some ideas about that video. I need to like maybe brainstorm a few titles or maybe um, just like quickly get some notes down about that video idea. And then I'll watch another YouTube video. I'll be like, oh, why am I not doing that? And it's a little, like, it's been a bit of an obsession for me over the past year. And that has been generally a good thing. Like, I have enjoyed that. And I've really enjoyed having, like, direction and being like, yes, I love this thing. And I want to put all my effort into this thing. So, like, just kind of try and grow it and make it work and all that. Um, but the cost is that I get, like, stressed. I overwork. I am distracted and not present and maybe not enjoying the journey as much as I should be. So definitely one of my goals for the next year is going to be enjoying it all and relaxing way more um, because when I look back there have been a lot of times so many weekends where I've been like oh shit I need to get a video out and like okay when am I gonna do it I'm gonna have to wake up early on Sunday I'll like plan it a little bit and then like I'll write a little bit and like inevitably the videos are just a bit shit when I make them in a rush and uh, that has happened so many times and I really hate that feeling um, of having to make a video uh, in a rush on a Sunday. Ironically, like I am doing right now. But I'm making this one in less of a rush because I'm just like, this is more of a kind of chatty, rambly video that I don't expect to do to do well. So I'm not really bothered about um, like, you know, uploading it at the right time or kind of optimizing for uh, lots of views or whatever. But it is still a Sunday right now and uh, I need to kind of edit this video and then upload it. And I don't really enjoy that feeling. Um, so my goal for the next year, or just in the future from this point on, will be to have a lot more fun with it and to like relax about it. And so might be a good time to just talk about, yeah, the what next section of this video, as I said at the start. Um, I don't really know about the next year. I definitely want to keep just doing stuff online. I'm gonna keep making videos and I'm gonna keep I'm a lot. On, I'm on Twitter quite a lot these uh, these days. Um, just tweeting a lot. So if you want to follow me at Tintin Smith, I'm t talking a lot about uh, YouTube and content creation, and that is going. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. It's like my little niche on YouTube on Twitter. So follow me there, um, and yeah, you can like send me a message, DM, whatever. I just want to kind of get a bit more of a thing going um, on Twitter, and so that will be something that I'm going to really focus on in the future. But with YouTube, the one a week thing. I don't know. I think it might have served its purpose in the sense that I think the initial purpose was to like get me going and to kind of like jerk me into action, to uh, really get me moving, to build a habit, to build an identity as a YouTuber, someone who makes videos and someone who like takes their, themselves seriously, as in I actually like do what I say I'm gonna do. But now the downside of the weekly upload is that like I can't, I. I want to make the videos better. I want to make the videos like the one that I made called I was wrong about quitting my consulting job and the one about Ali Abdal, like getting a new job with him. That video, those two videos were a lot more fun to watch and I enjoyed making them more and they're like little stories and they got more views. I would like to make more videos like that, like the kind of 10 minute story, uh, educational, like inspirational thing that kind of makes you feel kind of good. And a friend said to me that those videos are more like a treat for them, as opposed to a video like this, which is just a bit more chatty and rambly and whatever. So yeah, that, those are the types of videos that I wanna make a lot more. I wanna make a video about my finger, um, which I've said many times, and I've just been kind of putting it off because I'm like, I wanna make it good enough, and I can't make it good enough in a week. Um, so that is why I haven't made that video yet. But there are lots of other videos that I wanna make that I just like, will be a lot more fun to watch and uh, you kind of learn maybe less explicitly, I'm less going through like a list of 10 things that I wanna teach or share or talk about. I'm kind of making a little story about some part of my life probably, which hopefully will make people kind of like inspire people to do something or learn something. 
And those are the kind of videos that I want to make. And I think they'll do better as well because that's what does well on YouTube is things that uh, have like an engaging title and thumbnail, like really clickable. And you're like, oh, that sounds cool. You click on it and then it's a little story and you're just like, watch it until the end. Like Max Fosh, YouTuber, who I follow a lot, does this really, really well. And his, he's like a totally entertainment based channel and they're quite like silly videos a lot of the time. But I'm kind of like, what can I learn from that? What can I take from that? And the Ali Abdal video was a, um, experiment in that direction and I enjoyed it and I kind of want to do more of that but it's hard to make those videos in a week or kind of yeah within the weekly upload schedule so I'm genuinely not sure I don't know I'm so deep in the weekly upload now that it's so much harder to not upload than it is to upload there's this thing called the flywheel effect which is once a flywheel gets going it's a lot harder for it to stop than it is for it to keep going and the initial momentum required to get it moving is a lot. And it took a lot for me to get over the line and actually start making videos. But now that I'm making videos and making videos every week, it's harder for me to stop because I'm like, oh, I don't feel good if I don't make a video. So I'm not sure. I think I will still try to make one a week on average, but maybe have no upload schedule or maybe change the day that I upload because Sunday is kind of stressful. It's like the end of the week and the whole week I'm kind of building up to like uh, uploading and that's kind of um, can be stressful um, unless I have them like scheduled, which has definitely been the best way for me to get out of this stress is uh, get out of the kind of weekly upload stress. It's just when I'm like a week or two ahead with uploads and like, they're scheduled and I feel so much better about it. So there are ways of like systemizing uh, stuff and making it a lot easier for you to kind of like continue to make videos and for it not to be stressful because inevitably sometimes I get off this, I like lose track of the system um, and I'm like making a video that week for that weekend and that is not very fun and I don't really like it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna keep going basically is the short answer to what next, but uh, maybe in different forms, in different ways, I still want to make videos that are educational um, and people like generally learn from them as opposed to being generally entertained by them. However, I do want to make them more entertaining. I like making videos that uh, are fun to make and I like making videos that are fun to watch. And a lot of the videos that I have made in the past are not that fun to watch. They are like a bit more serious, a bit more like kind of explicitly educational and I think maybe that's done a bit on YouTube. I don't know. It's very hard to tell. It's very hard to tell what's gonna do well. There's a quote from Albert Einstein, which I think about quite a lot, which uh, relates to this, which is that uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And over the past year, I'm like relatively pleased with the growth of the channel, but not that pleased. And so, uh, actually that's not true. No, I'm super happy, but it's like, I want to do more. And the, yeah, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I'm like sticking to this like weekly schedule, making like relatively similar videos. And so, uh, at least the last like month or so, the videos haven't been that similar, but over the past year, a lot of them have been, and it hasn't really got me, uh, to like maybe make as good of videos as I want to. So I'm thinking, okay, I need to switch it up. I'll experiment with no weekly schedule and a bit more time into the videos and a bit more thinking and planning and having fun and see where that gets me. So that might be something that I do. I haven't quite decided exactly, but there are videos that I really want to make still and I haven't had the time to make them because I've been like sticking to the schedule. And I'm like, no, I should just make the videos and not worry about the schedule. So it may be, has served its purpose and I might just upload at random points. But there's some, there's a lot to be said for the weekly upload schedule. It's got me so far making a video every single Sunday in the sense that um, it's like, you know, pushed me forwards in my work and my career and whatever, and just in my life in general. But also um, people know I'm gonna upload on Sunday. I don't know how many of you actually like have like clocked that and tune in every Sunday. But I have a returning audience, which is like a stat that YouTube give you of people who have returned to your channel in the past 28 days, so people who are like supposedly regular viewers, of 2,200 people, which is pretty mental. That people, that many people are tuning in on a regular basis to uh, to my videos and to my channel. And that I think is like a directly related to the fact that I upload every week and it's like relatively consistent. You kind of know you're gonna get a video from me and I'm gonna talk about something in like a certain way. 
So um, like that consistency, there's so much value there. But I'm like, okay, how can I do more? And I always make these types of videos, these like chatty videos where I'm just like really honest about what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling and whatever. But I also want to really challenge myself and push myself to make great YouTube videos. And that might require me not to post every week. So yeah, I think that's everything that I've got to say on this really, a year on YouTube. Um, I, yeah, it's changed my life. I'm really glad that I took the leap and oh, I, it literally stresses me out so much to think about those early videos and to think about uh, myself back in October, November last year, like getting going and having to go through all of those like psychological barriers of starting and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. I'm just so glad I'm not in that place anymore. Yeah, it's been a, a hell of a journey so far and I'm gonna keep going, see where I get to um, and hopefully make uh, the process in the future just like less stressful, put less pressure on myself and yeah, maybe just be a bit more human about it all as well. Cause like a lot of the videos I've made in the past where I've tried to be like, a certain type of thing, a certain type of vibe. I've been like copying a lot of the people a lot whilst I've been like building up my uh, confidence and identity as a YouTuber myself. And uh, I'd like to maybe be a bit more, yeah, authentic and uh, experimental maybe over the next uh, year or, or whatever time frame. So yeah, thank you so much for like following along. If you do follow along, this video has been quite long. So um, yeah, sorry about that, but I hope you have enjoyed it, got some value from it. Um, subscribe if you're not already because if you've watched this far then you probably uh, like you know enjoy the videos to some extent so please subscribe it's super useful and um, I yeah let me know if you have any thoughts on any of this and drop them in the in the comment section and I'll, I always read them I always think about them I sometimes like take people's comments or tweets or whatever and put them in my notes and stuff and just think about them and, and like yeah I absolutely do consider all of that stuff so let me know what you think, but thanks so much for watching the video. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed some of it. It's just me rambling about the last year and YouTube and stuff. So um, not for everyone, but uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video, whenever that may be. I don't know if it will be, you know, on next Sunday. We'll see. Um, yeah, it's been a good year. So thank you.